excellences, colleagues, distinguished guests. Thank you very much for the invitation to be with you today. I'm delighted that so many eminent experts are gathered here to focus on how to achieve food and nutrition security through sustainable agriculture and food systems. Consensus is growing within governments, in civil society, among farmers and consumer organisations, among researchers, within the UN family and within development agencies, as well as the business community, more and more people agree that ending hunger and malnutrition is an essential part of the development of our world. Ending hunger and malnutrition is relevant to economic growth, to ecosystem maintenance and to human development. And decision makers are starting to believe that ending hunger and malnutrition can be achieved. This means that they're prioritizing food and nutrition security in national policies and programs. And that's excellent news, given that before 2008, the issue had been almost absent from international dialogue. To achieve food and nutrition security, the right policies and investments are needed. Here are some of my thoughts about what this entails. First of all, it means encouraging the production of more food while at the same time protecting natural resources and supporting inclusive rural development. Secondly, it means reducing waste and losses along the food value chain from producer to consumer. Thirdly, it means enabling all people to secure year-round access to the varieties of food required for good nutrition, including through stable, open, well-functioning markets and food supply systems. And fourthly, it means ensuring that households and all individuals within them are able to purchase, access and use the food they need through benefiting from adequate productive resources, from decent work, from well-designed social protection programs, and from having a knowledge and understanding of nutrition. So what does this mean for agriculture and food systems? Such policies do require a re-examination of how agriculture is working. And some people say it's time for a transformation in agriculture. Why do they say that? Well, first of all, they recognise that sustainable agriculture, rural development and social protection are necessary for economies to become greener and to thrive. Secondly, they appreciate that agricultural policies and practices that are both sustainable and environmentally friendly also help reduce the negative impacts of agriculture on the environment. And thirdly, they realise that adoption of climate smart agriculture and strategies to help small scale producers, who are often women, to connect to markets can help all farmers become more resilient. Across the globe, the transformation in agriculture is starting to happen. Agriculture and food systems increasingly respect human rights, including the right to food. They pay much more attention to smallholder agriculture systems. They're focusing on the need to be sensitive to nutrition and to help scale up nutrition outcomes. And they enable people to participate in decisions that affect their lives and their food and nutrition security. Now you might ask how can the transformation of agriculture and food systems be accelerated and made more sustainable? Here are some suggestions based on what I see happening in different settings. The full economic, social and environmental benefits of sustainable agriculture are best realised if policies are devised and implemented with the full participation of all stakeholders, including women, small-scale farmers, agri-food entrepreneurs and their organisations. 
reflecting the full costs and benefits of natural resource use in food value chains through comprehensive social and economic analysis can help us all make better choices. And participatory processes are also the best means to establish the policies, prices and incentives that encourage sustainable agriculture and food systems. So those are three ways in which we believe that the transformation can be accelerated and the centre of those is participation. And one of the most innovative examples of participatory international governance is the revitalised Committee on World Food Security, where member states, civil society and business gather to address, discuss and agree on new policies for nutrition security. Just last week, agreement was reached on the voluntary guidelines for the responsible governance of tenure of land, fisheries and forests in the context of national food security. A great success for the Committee on Food Security. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm optimistic that the political momentum around food and nutrition security can be harnessed for good effect. As you've already heard, the United Nations Secretary General has placed food and nutrition security firmly in his priorities for sustainable development throughout his second term of office. And he's pledged to seek a globally agreed goal on food and nutrition security, as well as to unlock the potential currently denied almost 200 million children who are affected by stunting, which is a sign of chronic malnutrition. Representatives of UN member states, civil society organisations, farmers groups, researchers and business executives are also increasing their attention to food and nutrition security. And this means that your meeting here in New York is extremely important. Why so? Well, firstly, your discussions will help focus attention on concrete development outcomes that matter to everyone. Let me spell them out. We mean people who are empowered so that they no longer experience hunger and malnutrition. We mean sustainable agriculture and food systems and equitable rural development. And we mean special attention to countries and communities whose resilience is sapped by recurrence crises, usually because of climatic events. Your meeting will help channel the energies of decision makers and those who advise them. And so my second thought about what you're doing is that you will support the development and functioning of accountable and transformative multi-stakeholder partnerships to achieve the outcomes I've just described. And then my third thought is your meeting will encourage participants in the Rio Plus 20 conference on sustainable development this June to affirm the importance of the outcomes and so contribute to the momentum that is already building around commitments for sustainable development. So in a few words, the goal is to ensure that all our people are nourished and all our planet is nurtured. Nourishing our people nurturing our planet, nothing less. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.